Hey everyone, what's up? Hope you are good. So it's been a couple of weeks since the uh, release of the latest, greatest uh, camera, 360 camera, the Insta360 One RS, one inch 360 edition. I think that's, I think that's it. And um, probably like the main question like people ask me or uh, have been sending me is like whether they should upgrade from the previous camera, which is most of the time the Insta360 ONE X2, which is a couple years old. Um, but yeah, probably the kind of most popular camera that that company has made and it is really awesome. So this is just going to be kind of like a comparison between those two cameras. I think they are very different. I don't think the new one is necessarily meant to replace the ONE X2. Um, I think they're designed for different audiences, but we're just gonna take a look and see what the differences are, so let's get into it right now. So first and foremost, the new one inch, what should I call it? Because that's too much of a long word. I'm gonna call the new camera the one inch 360 because its full name is just too much. It's gonna take about three hours to do this video. The main difference between the one X2 and the one inch 360 is the size of the sensors in uh, the lenses. The one inch 360 features obviously one inch sensors, whereas the one X2 has sensors that are literally about like a quarter of the size. So the difference in the uh, sensor technology is really significant. And what that means is that the one inch 360 edition should be able to shoot much um, better quality video, especially in low light, but should be able to capture more details, more realistic colors, and that kind of stuff. But before we go into more details about the video, let's just take a look at the uh, the design of each camera, that, because that is also a pretty uh, big difference between the two. The Insta360 ONE X2 is a much smaller camera, it is much thinner, it is much more compact. It is an all-in-one camera, it features those two, two lenses at the top of the camera, do stick out, but they're not um, massively bulbous, they are still fairly small and compact. It features a circular screen, a couple of manual buttons for um, controlling the camera, and a standard mount at the base. Like I say, the camera is designed really to be an action camera. It's designed to be small, waterproof, compact. You can easily fit it in a pocket. Yeah, you can carry it around. It's not heavy, it's very light. So all in all, it's designed to be as uh, mobile and movable as possible. And you can use so many different accessories with it. You can run around with it. You can attach it to a surfboard or a bike or your skis. The one inch 360, on the other hand, is a kind of different beast. It is much bigger. It is much heavier. It is wider. It has those big, big lenses of the top which stick out far more than the One X2. Great, it is kind of an add-on to the Insta360 ONE RS which is a modular camera so you can literally take it apart. There's four separate pieces which you have to combine to have this camera to function as it should. You also need to use the mounting bracket. Um, so all of these mean it's slightly more difficult to use. It's not gonna be usable as an action camera because it's too big, too bulky, too heavy. That doesn't mean you can't use it for moving video, which I'll go into later. You definitely can, but just you can't really be doing super intense action stunts and um, stuff that you would, could do with a much smaller camera. So yeah, just by design, you can see, see this, these are two very different devices devices that meant for different purposes um, but yeah there is definitely a pros and cons for both so let's get on to the important stuff let's start taking a look at some videos um, I've gone out and shot some videos side by side with both cameras at the same time so we can probably have a look and see what the differences are now obviously the um, specs kind of speak for themselves the one inch 360 featuring the obviously much larger sensors however it can also shoot 6k video resolution and uh, that is slightly higher than the 5.7k that the um, one x2 is capable of so so it should result in slightly more more sharp video as well as overall better quality. Now, just looking at the side-by-side -side video, um in certain situations you can really tell the difference, um, but in some it's more subtle. In perfect conditions like overcast daytime conditions, the difference isn't absolutely massive, especially if you don't zoom in, if you just look at it um at a, at a the kind of face value, you won't notice like a huge, huge difference. And that's because the ideal lighting conditions means the cameras are both going to perform. If you do zoom in though on, um, even during these ideal conditions, you do start to see a difference. You start to see where the one inch 360 does retain more details, uh, better colors, it's more vibrant. So there is a difference there, but it certainly is more subtle. Now, when shooting in low light conditions or in at nighttime, even if you're in a city or anything like that with artificial lights, then the difference becomes 
becomes a lot more apparent and that's when those larger sensors start to um, yeah start to do their job um, definitely sharper definitely better quality definitely less blurriness and just over and way less noise when um, shooting video in lower light um, areas so I so I do definitely see a difference and it is um, reasonably significant in uh, more challenging lighting conditions and but even in the normal well-lit areas it is a bit different and certainly that extra little bit of resolution when you reframe your videos then that will result in a slightly better quality um, that we've been expect that we've been used to for the past few years 6k isn't a massive leap but it's a little bit better that means your reframe videos can get away with being like 40 40p quality whereas before it was more like 1080p once you reframe them and obviously I've been showing you here some reframe video shot with both cameras uh, reframed using the app or the desktop studio and yeah 360 cameras is more about the creativity than the quality but I do think this one inch 360 edition does go some way to addressing that imbalance so um, yeah I'm not gonna say that the difference is absolutely huge when it comes to um, like everyday shooting but there definitely is a difference there now both of these cameras also feature uh, the insta 360's flow state stabilization which is there yeah it's, it's there to keep the camera smooth when you're moving around when you're doing any kind of moving shots now i didn't test these both as kind of action cameras because Obviously, um, like I said before, the one inch 360 is definitely not an action camera. You do not want to be doing super intense action shots, but I did use both of them like on a bike, on a scooter, and definitely the one inch 360 would be able to handle that, or just running around walking. And in those situations, both cameras are basically exactly the same. They both have the same settings. They both have horizon lock, direction lock, the um, stabilization works really well, as you can see. But like I said, the One X2 is more of an action camera, so you would be expecting to do a lot more with it. We'll be able to handle those kind of more intense um, action shots. Let, now let's take a look at some photos shot with both of these cameras um, side by side once again. So yeah, this basically is more easier to judge because there is more of a difference here between the two. If you're looking for a 360 camera for shooting like professional 360 photos such as virtual tours then the one inch 360 edition is definitely the better option. It can shoot um, higher resolution 23 megapixels versus 18. It can shoot uh, with those once again the sensors doing the larger sensors actually having more of an impact when shooting photos. And once again, both cameras can shoot raw, both cameras can shoot with a pure shot mode, which is kind of an automatic HDR mode, which combines loads of exposures together, does it all automatically, so you can get some really awesome shots without really having to do any editing, which is great for both cameras, but definitely on the one inch 360 edition, the photo's coming out a lot better. The One X2 is absolutely fine if you wanted to shoot photos for like social media, for Instagram, uh, for smaller screens and stuff like that, like it could do a perfect job for that. But you could use the One Inch 360 for shooting more professional virtual tours, certainly for like construction and real estate. It definitely has the capability, especially if you shoot with those pure shot and raw modes and you edit, you can get some really high quality images. When it comes to using the software, the apps, which um, I think is one of Insta360 kind of selling points, they're both, both basically the same because they're both use the same software the same features all of the um, the effects that work with the older cameras work with the one inch 360 so you can get these kind of called hyperlapse effects time shifts um, you can reframe in the app exactly the same as you would otherwise perhaps the higher resolution may uh, mean you might need a slightly more powerful phone than you did before um, so certainly the file sizes are larger so yeah uh, but the app is still working pretty good as long as you have a decent phone I do understand that some people have problems with crashing like sometimes it crashes for me as well but um, if you persevere you can get some awesome content from the app and the 360 studio so um, yeah it's basically the same as it was before it's constantly being updated with new stuff so yeah for both of these cameras I think the software is one of the um, one of the selling points so as for some other differences between these cameras, the only things I can think of is um, the lack of a single lens mode in the one inch 360 edition, which I think is a shame. With the One X2, you can shoot with just one of the two lenses in a kind of um, action camera mode. Uh, you can shoot 1440p um, just using one of the lenses so it kind of acts like a normal non-360 camera. I'm not sure why they don't do this in the One Inch 360. You can't just use one 
of the lenses. Uh, I think that's a shame. I don't know, maybe it will come on a future software update, but um, who knows? Also, the One X2 is completely waterproof without any case, although, I mean, some people have had problems with that, but the One Inch 360 is not waterproof at all. I mean, it's only, I think it's splash resistant, which basically means just don't get it wet. Yeah, so you definitely can't take it underwater. But yeah, guys, I think that's pretty much it. I hope you have seen enough footage from both of these cameras to kind of get the idea of what the difference between the two is. So like I said, I don't think this uh, new camera, the One Inch 360, is not meant to be a replacement for the One X2. Uh, I think they're meant for different audiences, different, uh, they're different price points, they do different things. Of course, the One Inch Edition is, a, uh, is more expensive, quite significantly so, but I think it is a much more powerful creative tool. You can get all the creativity of a 360 camera and um, kind of matching up to the quality of what we expect with normal cameras nowadays. I mean, it's still not quite there yet, but the definitely the larger sensors help and the increased resolution. So I've been enjoying using it. I think you can get some really awesome footage, but um, yeah, it's definitely not a replacement uh, for the One X2. If you're looking for another 360 action camera, this isn't it. Uh, we'll see if it comes out. I don't know, hopefully it does. Maybe GoPro will have one this year, who knows? Um, but yeah, that's it guys. I hope you found that useful. Um, if you are interested in buying either of these cameras, check the links below. Um, sometimes there are like deals and offers. You can get like a free accessory. Um, just click the links and see what happens. If, if you can get one, it will come up. Um, if not, then it won't. That's it guys. I will be doing some more videos about these cameras soon. So stay tuned and I will see you next time. Bye.